Hello all and welcome to today's virtual arena. Joining me is Will Rainey, the founder of the company Blue Trees Savings. And they help parents build up their, their confidence when it comes to money to enable them to invest better and also invest for their the future of their children. So uh, William, yeah, without further ado, thank you very much for joining us here today. Um, can you give our audience a bit of background to yourself, um, but also what led to the creation of Blue Tree Savings? Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, so I'm Will Rainey. Um, for around 17 years, I've been working in the uh, financial services industry. So I've been uh, working as a consultant, so advising some of the kind of largest institutional uh, asset owners in the world. So governments, retirement schemes and insurance companies on their investments. So how much risks they should be taking uh, in their portfolios. So I've had many years of, of talking about money. Um, but for, I don't know, for many years, I've always wanted to have uh, my own kind of business, but for many years, didn't really know what that should be. And then once I had my own children, so I've got two young daughters and I was wanted to think about their financial future. So the first thing I wanted to do was uh, to start investing for them, given my kind of background in investing. So that's what I did. But as we were at the time, I was living in uh, Hong Kong. Um, we didn't know how long we were going to be in Hong Kong for. So I had to think about what, if I wanted to set uh, an investment account up in their name. So I actually decided what I'd do is instead of putting money in their name, I'll just I'll have my own investment account. I would uh, invest some of their money in my account and just kind of allocate it to them. And that worked out really well. So it made it nice and easy from an admin point of view. But it also meant that when I gave my kids pocket money, they could save, I don't know, just like two pounds of pocket money and I could just allocate a little bit more. And it worked out really well. Uh, a lot less admin. Um, so that's what I was doing myself. And then to sort of educate my children on these investments I've started to make for them, instead of just showing them a pound amount because it would be a bit arbitrary for them, I started to show them their money as trees and trying to go on this theory of seeing money as seeds and if over time the more that they save and invest those trees will grow, uh, produce more seeds and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and they seem to really enjoy that and every time they're like, oh how many blue trees, because I used to call them blue trees, uh, do, I, do I have it now? Um, so that worked out really well. So then I started telling my, my friends and family about this um, and they thought it was a really nice idea, but they'd never invested themselves. Um, so then I started to talk to them about, okay, this is how what I did and how I, I did it. And then I set up a little tool so that other families could kind of replicate what I was doing with my children. So set up an investment account in their name and then just share it with them. So that was the kind of initial bit and I thought, okay, I can make this into a little bit of a business. So then I started to do some more research around this whole concept of teaching parents about kids and uh, financial well-being of, of children. And I found there was lots of really good resources that were going into schools and doing some teaching around what is money, uh, how a bank works, etc. But A, there wasn't that many of them, but also they were very much directing at the children, so I say going into schools, but there wasn't that much for parents to teach their kids. So if I, if I was a parent and I wanted to teach my kids, there wasn't that much around. So I thought that was a bit of a niche that I could fulfill because I was already kind of doing that with my friends, teaching them about investing and so they could set up investments for their kids. So that's when I started to think about setting up a business around that. So that's why I started to write some blogs and articles, which very much aimed at empowering parents to learn financial topics and then find engaging ways to, to talk to their kids about that. So kind of playing off that, um, the theory about trees and them growing and, and seeds, but then adapting that to different sort of financial topics, um, coming up with uh, financial superheroes and evil villains to, to try, really try and make it as engaging as possible, but also giving parents a lot of information as well. Um, so it's been a real uh, journey because as I said, at the start it was just about investments, but now it's much more broad to sort of do the, the whole kind of financial education piece. That's absolutely fascinating. And it, you know, I think it, it's so interesting that you are focusing on the kind of adult focus because ultimately they're the ones with the, the power to actually start investing. But also, as I've just learned, you guys offered, well, you're starting to bring in other various issues within financial services, other different products. You know, I mean, 
where is really where, where do you think you're going to take that if it started off as savings and investments you know what what's what do you think is the the biggest um maybe uh era of financial services that adults currently are are lacking um, when it so comes to expertise it's... apologies yeah so so most parents it's because most adults are never taught about money so i think it's just just this broad piece so the key one is the different uses of money and i think that's just because i'm a big believer in why parents need to be so involved is that kids need to develop habits about money it's not just about go to a classroom learn and then suddenly you're you know how to manage money it's all about learning as you go and that's why um kids who can develop save, small savings habits from an early age is, is fundamental. So getting parents to help their kids understand that there's these different uses of money is very key. And that's an area where without that kind of guidance, children will just learn that money is for spending and then they'll form a spending habit and that's where debt comes in. So that's where um, parents need to do more to sort of talk about just saving up for something. So saving up for a toy and having uh, technology or uh, accounts that they can kind of show that how much money they've got but the key one and this links to a bit to your question around um, the next area is making that money grow <laughs> how do you make that money grow because um, if you can get to a point where you're making money as you sleep it's such an important skill that no one's talked about and very very few people are actually doing sadly <laughs> and that's if children can learn that from a young age so it's talking about why do, why does money grow so talking about the stock market and why do companies um, make money and how do they make money but trying to do that in very simplistic terms but then also a key piece is how does money get taken away and again if people don't aren't educated about that um, then that's an area where people grow up quite naive again because I haven't been taught so credit cards is the most simple one that people all young adults when they get to, to 18 are going to be given an, a, a credit card and if you have no good habits in built into you or no knowledge about the, the sort of uh, spiral in interests on that, it can be very dangerous. So I think these are the kind of key areas. So the uses of money, but also the, the, uh, the services that are going to sort of potentially take some of that money away. So that's why the key area of some of the, the blogs and interest that I get from uh, the kind of work that I've been doing and the kind of reactions that I've been getting from, from clients. Well, excellent. I mean, it's, it sounds like an absolutely exciting place to be in. And, and I've got to say, you know, it sounds like it's come at a very exciting time in terms of um, obviously COVID-19 has meant for a lot of places, uh, a lot of people are working from home nowadays and a lot of children aren't even going to school as a result. So not only the children now not getting this, this knowledge, but obviously your parents have the perfect time to effectively uh, you know, teach their children. So, I mean, do you think working from home, do you think that environment is going to help blue tree savings? Do you think you, you can kind of, or this is an opportunity to, for parents to finally actually sit down and teach their children this this opportunity? For uh, 100% uh, in terms of it's a good time for parents to spend some time with their children and really talk about money. Um, with parents being at home, it gives those opportunities to have those small conversations about money. And I, I, I'm a believer it shouldn't be a big kind of classroom style let's sit down for three hours and go through every sort of uh, detail but just with children at home just trying to find ways of introducing money into the conversation um, even if they're doing sort of homeworks homeschooling instead of if they're doing some mathematics for example um, instead of just saying what's uh, three plus two it's kind of like, well, how much is a mars bar plus uh, a twix <laughs> and it kind of a helps them understand the value of the mars bar and the value of the twix and, and stuff so you're kind of introducing those kind of bits in their value of money is important um but also just having the kids around when you're doing money at home or you're doing some business or your, your actual work and you're talking about money with your clients and prospects or whatever business you're in you're likely to talk about money at some point again just with your kids around just start opening those conversations and it only needs to be just little snippets but just trying to make it uh, a point of having those conversations and yeah in terms of blue tree piece um yeah i hope so it will it's a good time for for that because parents will hopefully be looking for more resources um to talk to their children engage with their children on different topics and, and blue tree, i say we've been writing lots of articles to help parents talk to their kids about money at this time so uh, recently uh, a couple of weeks ago 
did a, a kind of story about rich farmer, poor farmer, which was talking about um, helping parents tell essentially a bedtime story about it's not about just working uh, hard, it's about working smart and again, getting that money work working for you, but in a kind of, a, in, a, in, a, in a nice kind of story. So it's kind of given parents these kind of resources to, to have these conversations. So a lot of the conversations I have with my kids are either in the morning uh, when we're having breakfast or when I'm putting them to bed. Um, and as I'm at home now all the time with my kids, I, I get to put them to bed every day and therefore a lot more opportunities in that space. So yeah, I do hope that a lot more parents see this op opportunity and being around their kids to have lots of small conversations uh, about money. Excellent. And now, as you said, it's it's all about start, starting off with those kind of small things, you know, Mars bars. Um, but uh, you know, as you also mentioned, Blue Trees is moving into other areas of financial services. Some that sound quite complex. Um, you know, how can uh, your offering enable a lot of parents who potentially find this quite difficult to begin with? How are you looking to educate these parents? Um, with these very complex financial services offerings? Yeah, so it's all about doing it slowly. So as one of the tools that's going to be, we're going to be releasing in September is this kind of habit maker. And it's there, so it's got some features that are similar to other sort of money apps for kids already. But the key piece there is it starts off with all of the money that they have in one place in terms of they can record it and see it in one place. Um, so if a parent doesn't have a bank account, say, uh, for their kids. It just shows it as a kind of IOU to the kids, this money. But then as they kind of build up that money um, and they do want to put it into a savings account or an investment account, it, it therefore allows them to do that, but also gives them some guidance exactly how to do that. So for example, one option is to save for the long term. So that's what we call bushes. Um, and they might already have a bank account, but then it's also got the blue trees, which is the, the investments if they want to do that. And that, by default, that might be switched off, but it's always there to say, if you want to have these blue trees and invest, here's a link to some pages which both help you as parents understand about investing, get that confidence so you can do it yourself, but also provide you information so you can talk to your children about what is the stock market, why does it, why does it exist, and etc. So it's trying to be all-encompassing, but also make it not scary and kind of just introduce topics uh, in there. But also the blogs and articles that we, we've been writing alongside the tools um, are really there to not just help the, the kids, it's there to, to help the parents and educate them in a, a very kind of unthreatening kind of way because it's written to empower them to be able to take that knowledge and pass it on. So we've tried to make it as simple as possible. Um, and that includes topics about pensions, tax, budgeting, uh, just the one about mortgages. But not trying to go into, they don't need to be mortgage experts, but just what are what are these concepts? How are they important to me? Uh, they're not in the tool or anything like that. We're not linking up to them at the moment, but potentially in the future, especially children pensions, which I think is a, a massively underutilized area, um, which the government is offering insane benefits, um, but they're just not promoted. And again, that's something we want to do both in terms of our blogs, which we have, but also in terms of in the future, add it into our tools that so kind of makes it nice and smooth and, and easy for parents to, to set these up uh, one step at a time. Absolutely brilliant. And I, that kind of actually leads me perfectly onto my next question. And I think that parents of uh, today, um, well, ultimately, I think I'd, li I'd actually like your opinion on this, um, have a harder task about teaching about money and saving than any other generation has gone before. Anecdotally, I was speaking um, to people over in um, Scandinavia and the Nordic countries, a very cashless society. And I imagine it's the same o over in Asia as well with the prevalence of QR codes. With, you know, with the prevalence of digital payments, it, you know, how much harder is it for parents to teach their children how to save? So at a very basic level, it's much harder and it's one of my biggest fears um, because children don't have that tangibility. There was a story on, on the news, I think it's only a few weeks ago, where a child, I think they were age 11, spent four, over £4,000 on a computer game using the in-app um, piece. And when they asked, and they just said, oh, I just thought it was like Monopoly money. Um, and they just didn't realise. Luckily, they got their money back uh, once the parents found out and, and told the, the computer company. But it just shows that there's this... Um, change as we're just using computer and digitization 
that kids aren't going to grow up with the I'm going to go and take my five pound note to the shops and get three pounds back and then decide what I'm going to do with it. So that what that means is that parents have to be more involved and help them see that tangibility of, of money, whether that's just showing them how much um, things cost when they go to the shops. So even if they're paying with card, they need to say that this is two times worth your pocket money or it will take you this many times just so they can start to get the feel of of that money. Uh, for ourselves, uh, again, we've always struggled to have small change around the house for, to give our kids pocket money. So we actually just have some little cards and we write numbers on that so it's kind of our own sort of pocket money currency um, and we give them and then when we when I want to buy something they give those bits of cards back and then we go and pay for for the, the toy or whatever they've saved up for uh, in the shops but the good news is there are now tools out there that can do digital money and help kids understand um, a bit more about digital money so even like our tool it was just coming out but there's other tools out there which really help parents will give their kids pocket money they can see it they can understand how much they need to save for a certain uh, toy or bike or whatever they want but it also allows them to see their money and see it moving up and down so you get a sense of when I do spend I can see my money going up if I don't spend it I can see it going down um, or vice versa sorry um, but that they get that sense of I'm looking at money I'm understanding I'm starting to build up a, a profile of it rather than mum can I borrow can I buy this this app or mum can I buy this song yes just press a button and they don't even know how much it costs they don't know <laughs> if it's expensive cheap discounted or, or, or anything like that because they have nothing to look at in a comparison so yeah no it's definitely one of my biggest fears but again hopefully technology and, and fintech etc can hopefully um, fill some of that gap without some of the fintech taking advantage of that clearly. no of course <laughs> and you know what? It, it's insane as well isn't it how also the, the fact that it's digital cash but it's also you know the anecdote you you gave was it's a digital product as well you know yeah. the intangibility of so many different things i certainly wasn't buying digital products when i was growing up um you know especially not with digital money and the the thought that there are people growing up with that and obviously you know, People are growing up with, um, for instance, tablets in their hands just in, from the go. Um, it, it must be a very interesting conversation there. And um, yeah, thank you. Now, I mean, speaking about that, how does Blue Trees, if you effectively, you are effectively marketing to the parents. So, how do you work on finding that balance between conversation between a parent and then also being able to chat to the children at the same time through the same tool? Yeah. Um, so, a lot of it, so it's a little bit of trying to get the conversation about kids to help the parents. So it's not so much, it's a bit of a counterintuitive in the sense of, um, first of all, get the, the parents and un get them to understand the money and then they'll tell the kids. It's actually been going, talking to the parents, but kind of going through the parents to talk to the kids. And it's been really interesting because parents themselves will have lots of excuses not to save, for example, form good habits. So a good, a good story is my friend who has earns okay money, but never saved because they um, always had a new house, they had a new car, the holiday, the refurbishments. And it's only when I started to talk to them about their kids, they went, okay, I should learn something about this. And then they started to set up their own investment account for their kids. And then they started to do that for themselves as well. And then they started to ch make changes for their own and they've now increased the amount they're, they're investing for themselves. But it was very much using the kids as, as like the subject <laughs> to actually change the parents' behaviour themselves because they got more knowledgeable and they could see some, they started to see some of the benefits. And the amount of conversations that I've had with parents which said, oh, my kids are going to have more money than me. And I was like, that should not be the case. <laughs> that should never be the case. <laughs> um, uh, until they get some adults. So it's more about trying to use those conversations about children to help uh, educate the parents and change the habits and, and money processes of the, of the parents themselves. Um, so a lot of parents are really engaged with that and actually it's been one of the byproducts is the amount of feedback I've got saying from the parents saying I've, I've learned lots of new stuff myself when I'm, I'm in, uh, enacting some of the, the recommendations you're saying to my children I'm doing myself uh, so I get a good buzz out of that and I think that just helps the, the conversation no one seems it's threatening or 
anything like that. So it's a it's a nice kind of uh, homogenous kind of conversation about both the children and the parents at the same time. So it's uh, yeah, that's no, been really enlightening to me because that wasn't what I expected at, at outset. No, I can imagine. It's so interesting hearing almost effectively the parents are getting envious of their children, like making this head start in life. And they're like, oh, I'm trying to catch up. Um, oh, that sounds absolutely brilliant. And I mean, with that in mind, let's move on to the kind of technological side of it. So with your tool, do you, how can a parent effectively um, bring in their investment portfolio that, and their, their account um, and incorporate it with the children's one. Does that happen on, on your tool or do you give a, a tool that's just a, a visual aid for the children? Yeah, so the way our tool works at the moment is that we don't access parents' accounts. So it's if a parent has, so for example, we have an investment fund that um, with a big investment company. Um, so what we do is we can track the, the, the price of that fund every day because that's just public information and then with information from parents uh, about how much they have in that fund on day one and how much they plan to put in there kind of on an automatic basis each month we can then replicate what they're going to have each month the value of that on a daily basis um, going up and down so we don't need to go into access and get open banking etc at this stage that might change but at the moment we can do a good replication and if it ever deviates parents can easily reconcile um, and then the tool essentially allows to be able to split that fund up so once you've got that fund and it goes up and down on a daily basis it, it automatically says well you put in 20 pounds two days ago you own this amount of that fund and therefore as that amount goes up and down they can track that so it, it does both the tracking so replication um, but then also does the visualization it says okay your children has I don't five percent of your fund therefore they have five blue trees uh, for example and they can see that that progression in their sort of blue tree forest sort of growing and, and as I say the new tool will not just have investments but have savings that have bushes and they'll have flowers and, and etc for, for different pots of money that they might have in there um, but also if a parent doesn't have an investment fund that um, they want to share and they just want it in their, their kid's name, again, it can do the same piece. As long as we know what that fund is, we can kind of track the movements and tell them uh, exactly what their, their fund value is, uh, subject to them not making any ad hoc uh, money in or money out without telling the tool. Um, so it's very um, early stage and again, as over time, it would be nice to, to have that link in there to uh, have the pure open banking but at this early stage we just want to to get buy-in from parents um, and, and really build up that technology over time brilliant well you know it sounds so exciting so i mean with that in mind a bit of a, a crystal ball question here and uh you know we, we, you hinted at what, what's coming next but you know can you give me a, a, a brief rundown what's in the future for blue trees and where can our viewers find out more about you guys yeah, no, definitely. Um, so I'm quite ambitious in terms of what we want Blue Tree to be because it's this mission of really trying to empower parents. So I want the Blue Tree as a, a brand to be the place where people go, parents go for any kind of resources towards helping their kids um, become more financially educated. So if they want to learn about how to create good habits, go to Blue Tree. If they want to find uh, articles about different topics such as mortgages, uh, debts and all this how do I teach my kids kind of go to blue tree um, if I want an advisor to help me set up um, an investment who's the best advisor I can go to kind of go to blue tree um, so I kind of want all this that, that to be the hub so that's my ambitions in terms of that kind of brand in terms of the tool I want that to to have as many parents using it as possible but again to partner up with as many companies as possible so I can reach as many parents as possible and therefore ultimately help as many of the next generation become uh, financially literate and start building those habits from a young age. So the more I can partner up with uh, schools, more I can partner up with employers, uh, more I can you know, with technology companies to, to sort of really target um, parents because as I say I think there's a good advantage there as I said sometimes parents don't think about investing for themselves but using the children as a catalyst so hopefully investment companies in the future will, will kind of see that and, and do more to sort of really facilitate uh, children investing um, but without buying individual stocks because I don't believe in that um, and so in terms of uh, how they can get in contact so the, the 
main place where I have most of my resources is uh, www.bluetreeblog.com. Um, and then the tool is uh, bluetreesavings.com. So I've got those those two websites. But I'm on LinkedIn. I pretty much post daily on, on LinkedIn. Um, so under Will Rainey. Um, and I also do post on um, uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter, but not as regularly. Well, Will, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. And I, yeah, I hope you've had a good time. Um, yes, now, uh, to all our viewers, uh, yeah, as Will said, you can check them out there. And uh, you can also see the rest of the series over at www.fintechf.com and, of course, LinkedIn and YouTube. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. See ya.